Alright, this is a little video on a product review of my experiences for a program called Team Viewer. It's a program that allows remote access to my desktop computer from the iPad. It's very easy to use once you get used to it. And I'll just show you some features once I get into it. This video will be edited because of the nature of uh, putting in my username, password, and all that good stuff. But for the most part, I'll try to leave as much as I can intact as I go through the program. Right now displayed on the iPad is the uh, program basically from the iPad store, application store. As you can see it just has some general pictures but I'm going to show some of the functionalities uh, once I get through the setup of the program uh, offline of this particular video. So for right now I'm going to stop and get things set up and then I'll be right back online. Alright, bear with the quality of this video. I'm kind of holding the camera in a 90 degree angle from normal view because the program TeamViewer only shows up in portrait and I just didn't want to keep turning the iPad around on the desk. So, this is the logon screen of the program. Very simple process, username and password. It has a recents. It also has a friends list should you establish one and also many different options that I'll be going through in a few minutes after I log on but the purpose of this segment was just so you one can see what the initial log on screen looks at before I actually log in so I'm going to stop the video for now and next time I start videoing will be when I'm logged in alrighty I've logged on to the team viewer program and you're currently looking at my computer desktop I want to go over some features that some might find beneficial about this program. One, it does behave nicely on the 3G network. It's almost like I'm sitting in front of the computer on 3G. With the wireless, it is like I'm sitting in front of the desktop on the iPad. And currently, you are looking at the iPad. As you can see, i got National Radar set up on the iPad and also the desktop. Uh, control of the desktop is done strictly by touch however one has to look at the iPad as a touchpad when making executions for opening closing programs or anything of the nature in other words touching the minus up here won't minimize this program you actually have to direct the cursor the computer cursor to actually minimize the program. So if you think of the iPad as a big old touchpad on a laptop you will navigate much quicker and easier within the program. You have the ability to zoom in if you chose to on the desktop and then you can pan across and be able to see the desktop icons easier. I just find it easier to display the whole screen as if I was looking at the computer monitor on the desktop. I've got a couple programs open on the computer desktop purposely just to show some of the benefits and navigability. I do have dual monitor on the desktop and I will show how I change monitors. Right now I'm currently on one of the monitors on my desktop which is my left hand monitor and I'll show within the application how I switch the monitors. It has the ability if like on an iTouch or iPhone if you shake it side to side that will switch the monitors to shaking the unit. I just find it very cumbersome and obviously for videoing purposes it would be quite cumbersome to pick up the iPad shake it to go to monitor to my right hand monitor so I'll show you another way very easily to navigate between the monitors and again gotta think in terms of this being a big old touchpad. Your finger does not have to be on the arrow and it probably is a little easier away from the arrow so you can see the arrow and what you're doing for the movement within the desktop. Got an Excel spreadsheet open. If I open one up, as you can see, it's like I said, just like working on the desktop. If I wanted to select a cell to make an entry, all I'd have to do is click on the actual cell, bring up the keyboard, change the numbers, one, two, 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 two just as an example hit the down arrow and there I have my entry. Again, touching here won't do executed. I've actually got to 
executed by taking a silk thing and clicking and then the numbers entered. So if I wanted to copy the format of that cell above it, click there, format painter, and then click on the cell below it. And sure enough, as you can see, that's how it's navigating and typing within the Team Viewer program. It is quite different than just keyboarding. You got to get used to the iPad typical keyboard uh, of touching. And touching the cursor of the computer doesn't touch this. You actually have to bring that up using the iPad or application keyboard itself. So navigation keyboarding is a little cumbersome, but it works. It does work, and it works rather well once you get used to it. It does take some getting used to. Get into another program. So you can see the refresh rate comes up pretty quick. I do find a little lag in the actual application as compared to the desktop. And like I said, I can see side to side, and it's much smoother on the desktop but it's kind of choppier on the iPad but again it's not designed for videos it's not designed for anything really of animation without some type of network lag that's a typical thing that I found on just about any type of uh, remote access so just something to consider that if you're going to watch movies from your desktop it's not going to happen also if you do watch anything with audio or listen to anything with audio, it does not come out on the iPad. Program now, if I like, for example, I am tracking a friend of mine who's actually in the air flying in another sound downer. For me, because I have my browser on another monitor, I just switch over to another monitor. Oh, go back, hit the wrong button. Monitor. Since I'm on monitor one, which is my left hand one, go to monitor two. And there he is up in the air, sure enough, dodging some thunderstorms. A little deviation. Again, this is nice because I'm no longer restricted to Safari or an iPad application for web browsing. I can actually use Firefox that I'm using on the desktop. So it's really nice in that respect. And again, I'm saving battery power on the iPad because all of the downloading that's taken place is actually on my desktop. Something that I would look at. And that's how I set up my speed dial in Firefox and then break it out by various sites. So as you can see, the refresh is fairly quick and I'm not unhappy with it. Like I said, on 3G, it works for me. So again, this map is animated. It probably won't flow smoothly due to the fact of the network, dealing with networks. It's not bad, but when I'm looking at the desktop and I look at the iPad, it is a lot choppier on the iPad. Just to give you an example of, again, depending on your own network, how fast things come in. If I go to news sites here, again, if you notice, I'm not clicking anywhere. The arrow is actually up here by the tabs. But again, I'm using this as a touch pad, like a laptop. And as long as I point the cursor where I need to be, I can touch anywhere on the iPad, as long as the cursor is on the CNN.com it'll go to CNN.com. So you can see it's fairly quick. Uh, again, with the uh, uh, streaming, if you wanted to stream a video, it's not good because it does not stream the sound that comes along with the video. Pictures come out pretty good as far as that. It's not, it's, it does come up a little grainy in some pictures. Again, probably because of the iPad limitation and also because of the remote program or team viewer program. This video is getting long enough, so I think I will stop now and hope some will find this useful. Take care.